Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology, the genre of science fiction that applies scientific principles and knowledge about biology, ecology and evolution to creature design and world building. Today we will be looking at the Gilman, the river monster from the classic monster movie Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yes, that's what it's called. A reminder of older times, when monster movies were all the rage, The Gilman has definitely left a lasting mark on popular culture, still remaining as a monster archetype even along more popular monsters such as werewolves or Dracula-style vampires. For this one, I decided to take a look at The Gilman across all three of its original movies and see what this classic monster would be like as a living, breathing animal. So, without further ado, let's get started. Back in the Devonian period, around 400 million years ago, heavily armored fish known as placoderms roamed the seas. As time passed, life emerged from the sea and soon started thriving on land diversifying and evolving into a huge variety of species. It is at this point that one ancient species of placoderm, a particularly big and ferocious species, found its niche as an ambush predator of land animals. Wading and lurking beneath the murky waters, this ancestral placoderm leapt out to catch prey that ventured too close to the water's edge, just like modern crocodiles do. An animal that depended upon such a lifestyle, however, would do ill to remain bound to the waters for long. Its spectral fins transformed into strong limbs that allowed it limited movement on land, reaching a body plan similar to that of an enormous mud skipper. Pretty soon after, its pelvic fins followed suit, forming strong legs that allowed it to pursue other creatures even into land, before taking its prey back to the waters and devouring it. As the original placoderm evolved into a more mobile and nimble predator, its heavy armor turned into a series of plates that allowed full movement. And so, the species known nowadays as Piscanthropus gigantis, the Gilman, was born. The modern Gilman is found across the Amazon River and its tributaries. As other tetrapods quickly fill the landscape, taking advantage of all available ecological niches, the Gilman remained in a very efficient and practical role, and so had little reason to change and adapt into new body plants. Because of this, this amazing creature has changed little since the times before dinosaurs roamed the earth. While incredibly divergent from ancestral placoderms, the gillman remains a living fossil, the last species of this armored fish still remaining in the modern world. While its novel limbs are entirely boneless, they are still incredibly powerful, their outer plates helping give them structure and mobility effectively replacing bones. The hind limbs are strong enough to hold the entire weight of the gillman in dry land. The forelimbs, while weak when compared to the hind limbs, are still mighty enough to hold prey while it feeds. Gillmen also use their claws for digging underwater dens, which they use for shelter, and its forelimbs are precise enough to allow it to swim without disturbing the water surface, thus remaining undetected by prey. During the mating season, these big paddle-like arms become particularly useful. Males of the species will use them to build dams using tree branches, logs, rocks and algae, which are held together by secretions from the male's kidneys as is the case with other types of freshwater fish. These dams are intended to impress females, and their final purpose is to protect the couple's fertilized eggs. 
If the female considers the dam to be well built, sturdy and secure enough, she will lay her eggs and allow the male to fertilize them, after which the female will leave the male to care for the eggs by himself. If the male is successful, this brief encounter will lead to the birth of a new generation of predators. Unfortunately, these dams can be difficult to see from the surface and will often get in the way of boats that travel through the rivers. While the eggs are usually kept far below the water level, thus safe from damage, the impact can easily cause people aboard the boat to fall prey to the gillman that protects the nest. Despite retaining a mostly identical external appearance, several adaptations have taken place that help the gillman survive in its modern habitat. For starters, the gillman's respiratory system has evolved complex structures similar to the lungs seen in a lungfish. When out of the water, the gillman will close some of its gills and open a different set, allowing it to more efficiently extract oxygen from air. Thanks to these lungs, the gillman can pursue prey and stay above water for longer periods before returning to the water. Another adaptation that further separates the gillman from its placoderm ancestors is its amazing cellular regeneration, which allows it to recover even entire limbs after losing them to injury, similarly to axolotls. Even as a predator, the gillman's plates are still incredibly important for the safety and survival of this organism, as it protects it from injuries sustained during hunts and territorial battles. However, strong enough prey and predators can still cause enough damage to the gillman, plated armor or not. This regeneration was incredibly useful when hunting during the Mesozoic, as the fossil record shows injuries were quite common when facing bigger creatures or pack animals that may try to defend their own. While its current habitat is not as densely populated with dangerous creatures, this regeneration turned out to be very useful after mankind's expansion. Additionally, the blood of the gillman contains an incredibly high percentage of white blood cells, sometimes measured as high as 35%. These cells are part of animal immune response and are very important to their survival of gillmen. These creatures, after all, have to fight not only infections by pathogens present both in the air and on water, but most also defend themselves during the very vulnerable state they find themselves in while their limbs are regenerating. While this species is naturally found in South America, it was taken to Florida, USA, by either very unethical or very misguided scientists, who imported a number of Gilman specimens in 1955 in order to study their extreme regeneration capabilities. Despite the purported security measures taken to ensure their containment was successful, several specimens escaped into the swamps and formed a stable population, becoming a very dangerous invasive species in the years to come. And that's it for a speculative biology look into the gillman. Honestly, when I went back to look at all of the gillman's exploits, I was surprised at how much stuff there was to work with. All their monster and sci-fi movies really took a lot of care into the creatures they featured, even if the end result might seem goofy by today's standards. In the end, the gillman turned out to be a great research subject, and I hope you liked how this one turned out as well. If there's any type of creature you would like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.